and right on cue. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring in Seattle. Right when I turn the camera on, sounds like somebody's outside with a chainsaw. I guess they're doing yard work. So there's some horrible loud machinery out my window, which I hope you can't hear. I want to do a video right now. I'm really stressed out. Maybe I should just go for a walk. It is September 4th, 2020. And suicide rates are up. I think about suicide a lot, but I've never acted upon it. And I'm not saying that to scare anybody or cry for help or uh, I'm just being honest and having transparency. I don't act upon my suicidal thoughts because I think I have committed suicide in past lives and it did not accomplish the goal. I just had a therapy session on the phone um, with the free community center that I'm hooked into with my health insurance here in Seattle. And I appreciate the woman that checks in with me once a month or every three weeks but it's not high quality therapy. I feel like this community clinic that I go to, I used to go to in person, now I just check in online. I feel like they might be good at helping people that are in emergency crisis type situations get through the day. Um, but somebody who needs deeper support, not much help. The loud noise out my window is really bothering me. It's a really hot day and I had to shut the window because of the loud noise out my window. The problem is it's very hot. I turned my fan off as well. I'm having boundary issues. Boundary issues with the person I'm dating. Uh, I've been dating him for five years and boundary issues with my parents, with both my mother and my father who divorced when I was four. I'm 51 years old. I'm trying to grow my hair out. Um, I tend to streak it blonde. It's starting to get silver streaks coming in. I have naturally curly hair. Uh, I'm resisting the urge to streak it right here to blend it. Um, some people in my life say I look better with it streaked blonde. Other people say let it grow natural. Other people say do whatever you want. Today I went to the food bank and I stayed in the line for two and a half hours. The reality of my life is I'm low income, um, but I have a very inexpensive lifestyle and I already have extra food so I don't desperately need the food that the food bank gives me for free but I'm kind of addicted to going there and I go there every week I don't drink alcohol and I don't smoke cigarettes and I don't smoke marijuana I don't have any kind of substance abuse type addictions um, I'm addicted to going to the food bank perhaps. I'm addicted to, I have a tremendous fear of scarcity. Um, I don't want medical treatment mandated and forced upon me. I won't go into specifics. Uh, so I have concerns about big pharma and concerns about being forced to get medical treatments that I don't think will be safe for my health. So I'm feeling stressed about that. I'm feeling stressed out about, and I hope that this video helps somebody. I don't know how many people actually listen to my videos. I have a radio show that I do every week called Goddess Kring Radio that I air every week on hollowearthradio.org. And then I archive it on my Patreon and my Mixcloud. I live alone with my cat, Kisun, who's an orange fluffy cat. I went to the food bank today. My boyfriend wanted me to meet him and take a little boat ride in the middle of a lake on his inflatable boat, which sounds like fun. But I couldn't go to the food bank a few days ago because I got a couple modeling jobs. I really love working. 
and I love going to the food bank. Leisure time is something that I do on the side. So the boundary issue came up when my boyfriend was frustrated with me and I feel like he condescendingly insinuated that it made no sense that I would rather go to the food bank than go on a boat ride with him. Okay, now there's a loud truck out my window. This is wonderful. Oh, there's a loud garbage truck going by. Thank you, Mr. Garbage Man or Woman. So I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that I have my physical health. I wish that I had better mental health. I suffer from obsessive compulsive thinking, anxiety, and I tend to be a bit melancholy. And I think I have post-traumatic stress tendencies because I anticipate all the problems that might happen. My mom is a 75 year old talented artist, but ever since my stepdad passed away suddenly a few years ago and she had to file for bankruptcy, she has not been doing her artwork. And to make a long story short, my mom had to have an expensive car repair recently that she could barely afford. And she needs her water pump fixed at her house. She lives out in the country in the woods and she has a well. And I think it's gonna be about $5,000 to get a new pump. And so she asked me about, she could try selling my stepdad's paintings She's not in the situation now to sell her own artwork because she needs to make new art in order to sell it. She says that she wants to, my mom is 75 and she's very healthy. My dad is 78 and he's very healthy. My dad lives in Florida. I have, and this is, this is no disrespect to either one of my parents. I love both my parents. This video is about Shannon Kringen talking about her boundaries and her family challenges. Um, I mean no disrespect to either one of my parents. This is not about me criticizing them as much as acknowledging the challenges I have in being the only child of these two parents. They divorced when I was four. My dad lives in Florida and he is very financially doing well. He has an amazing retirement plan. He worked most of his life and he just retired uh, within the last couple years he retired so he worked until he was 70 something and he has an amazing 401k and really good social security he owns a home that he lives in in florida his two cats were killed about a month ago by a dog and it was very 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 traumatic very freak horrible occurrence my dad is in post-traumatic stress disorder therapy as well as a grief counseling group. He volunteers at the Humane Society. Um, he helps cats and he's an animal lover. He saves turtles when they're crossing the freeway in Florida or the highway or whatever it's called. He lives near Port St. Lucie, Florida, near West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, so my dad is doing well, except he's trying to heal and recover from his cats being killed by a dog who got loose in the neighborhood. Long story. He's working through the grief. Um, I feel very devastated by the fact that that happened to him. He mostly supervised his cats at all times and he just went inside for a few minutes to do something and then he heard the dog barking and he ran outside and he couldn't save his cats and he witnessed really horrible things. Um, and his cats both one passed away on the spot the second cat was injured he had to rush the cat to the vet and the, the vet and my dad agreed that the cat needed to be euthanized because she was in pain and had a spine injury that could not be helped so my dad is very devastated by that and it's really sad and uncomfortable um I feel guilty for, I wish that my parents were both doing better than they are. And I feel guilty for thinking that because I love them and I'm their daughter and I want to be a good daughter, but I feel kind of like my parents have never really been able to protect me. Um, they met in college and 
I think mostly got married because they got pregnant with me. It was kind of like, oh, I guess we have to get married now. And they were together for four years and then they split up because they really, my parents were just not meant to be together. Uh, I, I almost had a kid in my 20s and then I had an abortion because I was too scared. And the guy that I got pregnant with, it was his idea, long story. I never got over that. And that was in my 20s and now I'm 51. And so I decided to not have kids and not ever get married. And I'm acknowledging the fact that I'm an only child and I'm very wounded. And I feel like my mom is going through financial troubles. My mom wants to give me her house when she passes away but she doesn't own her house. So I'm thinking that it would stress me out more than it would help me to inherit her house because if she passes away and I inherit her house, I have to pay the mortgage on her house or rent it out or move in or buy it or whatever it is I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm the only child. I have no siblings. I have no brothers or sisters. I'm not close to any of my, I don't have any, let's see. I have some uncles, but I don't know them very well. I have some cousins, but I don't know them very well. So really, I only have my mom and my dad. So when my mom passes away, she doesn't own her home. She's still paying mortgages on, a mortgage on it um, because her and my stepdad took out a second mortgage. I think they had it paid off, and then they took out a second mortgage to invest in their art, in their art studios. Both my mom and stepdad are artists, and my stepdad passed away suddenly a few years ago. We don't even know why he just died suddenly at home and we don't know why because we didn't get an autopsy so we don't know so there was something wrong with him so he suddenly died it was awful um my mom witnessed him dying and the uh paramedics came and tried to resuscitate him uh, my stepfather had a do not resuscitate order but my mom had it in a safety deposit box so when the paramedics arrived my mom had to tell them my husband does not want to be resuscitated. And the paramedic said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but unless you can show us the sheet of paper, we have to try to save him or bring him back. So my mom said, okay. And then they tried to bring my stepdad back for about 15 minutes and he was, he was dead. He remained dead the whole time. He did not come back. He died. He was dead, completely dead. So my mom witnessed my stepfather dying and then trying to be resuscitated, even though he didn't want to be resuscitated. So my mom was very traumatized by that. And this was just a few years ago. It was awful. So that was unfortunate. Um, my mom and stepdad are artists, or they were, my stepfather was an artist. They got a second mortgage on their house. My mom had to file for bankruptcy after my stepfather died. My mom is a very intelligent, sensitive person who studies Eastern philosophy, Advaita Vedanta, non-duality. She's very intelligent, but the reality is she lives, she thinks of herself as a full-time professional artist, but the reality is she has a beautiful art studio, but the roof is leaking. She lives in a cute house, but she needs a new water pump. So the reality of that, and maybe I'm focusing too much on my mom. I, I, I'm, I don't have good boundaries apparently because I'm worried about my mom's problems. I keep thinking my whole life, I think I'm a sensitive daughter and I've always been worried about my parents' problems. I have a really hard time focusing on myself. And then sometimes people tell me I'm a narcissist and then they, because I take 20 million pictures like here, here's my art. Okay, I'm gonna put my hand in the frame. Here's some artwork of mine. Some people think I'm a narcissist because I photograph myself. This is my way of making art. I feel like an actor. When I photograph myself, I feel like I'm an actor and a performer. These are different facets of my personality, this artwork. So this is all just, you know, self-portraits of me, except this one is me as a three-year-old. So obviously I didn't take that picture. Somebody else took that picture, but you can see I was even sad back then. So, so this is my art, some of my art anyway. I mean, I, I do a lot more than just this. I, I do um, like designs, like fully abstract patterns and designs like this. But a lot of my art is self-portrait photography. And for a living, I model for artists. So people draw me and paint me. So this is like what helps me feel like I'm the real Shannon Kringen, my art. Um, but my mom 
is having a lot of financial problems. And my entire life, my mom has had financial problems. Um, I witnessed her get married and divorced four times by the time, well wait, her fourth husband and her stayed together until he passed away a few years ago. So by the time I was a senior in high school, my mom had, was on her fourth marriage. And so it, I'm glad she finally found a husband that she could stay with for 30 some years. That's great. She finally found a good marriage and a good husband uh, that was compatible with her. But unfortunately for me, the daughter of her, it was very difficult to move around and, and go through marriage, divorce, marriage, divorce, marriage, divorce. She got married and divorced so many times. And apparently I'm an empath or something, or my boundaries are just, am I, am I an empath or do I have weak boundaries or what's the problem? I'm highly sensitive. I don't know if I'm autistic or I'm an empath or, and some psychotherapists have thought I had borderline personality tendencies. I don't really know what the truth is. I don't want to label myself. I just had a therapy session on the phone. It was not helpful at all. I appreciate the therapist. She's a smart lady, but I just don't think it's very helpful. I, I mostly, I just need to help myself. I need to listen to my own wisdom. So I think that my boundaries are the real issue here. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I remember hearing my mom talk about her paying her bills and having trouble paying her bills when I was in like first or second grade. And I remember thinking, oh no, how's my mom going to pay the bills? And I was really worried about it. Um, and then my dad, you know, I heard him talk about his love life and how he felt rejected by women and women are dead below the waist and, and she knows it, don't look back and all this kind of weird, like hostility he had and passive aggressive. My, both my parents were neglected by their parents. Um, so both my parents have challenges. My dad right now is doing very well financially in his retirement. Uh, but he is traumatized and in post-traumatic stress disorder therapy and grief counseling because he witnessed his two cats being killed by a dog. And he was very close to his cats. You know, he, he felt like they were family to him and he would take them for walks every day in his yard. And my dad pampered his cats and was very close to them. They were like little dogs who followed him around everywhere. So that was really traumatic for him. And he's a sensitive animal lover. Um, so my mom has financial problems and she wants to give me her house when she passes away. Um, but I don't know, she doesn't own her house. And so I, I'm worrying too much about the future. Um, so my artwork, okay, I'll put this down now. Thanks for looking at my art. And now I hear a garbage uh, man out the window. Okay, so I'm worried about my mom. I'm worried about what's going to happen. My grandmother and my mom had a very bad relationship. And my grandmother was an animal lover. And she had horses and two big dogs at the time uh, when she started to decline in health. Um, she was living on low income social security and spending pretty much all of her money taking care of her horses. Um, feeding them organic carrot and organic, you know, horse food that's, you know, high quality organic horse food. Um, she pampered her horses and she took really good care of them. And at the time uh, that she died, she, my uncle took her in. What happened was my grandma was trying to very stoically uh, live independently in a house that she was renting. She could barely uh, afford it and all of her money was going to feed her dogs high quality dog food organic you know high quality dog food and organic high quality horse food for her horses and she was just eating tv dinners and my grandma used to be really picky and only eat high quality foods but she loved her animals so much that she just ate junk food cheap junk meals on wheels or whatever and then she fed her animals high quality and then she her dogs knocked her down one day um, but her dogs were nice dogs. What happened was my grandma was ill. My grandma ended up having the same thing that Dudley Moore died from PC. It's, um, it's when you PCP, I think is the short, well, that's a drug, but PCP or something, some kind of Dudley Moore, the actor Dudley Moore had it and died very slowly from it. When your brain and your, your body and your mind lose touch with each other and you lose control over your muscles, you end up eventually not being able to breathe on your own. So my grandmother died a few years later peacefully. Thankfully, my uncle took her in 
and did hospice care for my grandmother um, because my mom did not want to take care of my grandmother because they didn't have good relationship my mom says your grandmother is a narcissist your grandmother objectifies me your grandmother doesn't love me that's what my mom said to me my mom said your grandmother doesn't love me so my mom did not feel loved by her mother and so my uncle took her in and she died very slowly from this horrible disease she lied in bed for the last few years of her life and she had her dogs with her so my uncle let her keep her two dogs because that made her happy um, and she died very slowly and my uncle did hospice care for her at home and had a nurse come and they gave her morphine and they did whatever to help her be more comfortable and then she eventually passed away very slowly very gradually apparently my uncle said it was very peaceful for my grandmother so that's good but my mom did not want to take care of her and I'm the only child so when my mom becomes elderly and needs my help I'm the only one that's going to help her or we have to find social workers and whatever it is they do for low-income seniors my mom does not think of herself as a low-income senior but the truth is my mom is 75 years old she's living on Social Security but her mortgage costs almost all of the Social Security is taken up by her mortgage so she only has a few hundred dollars a month to pay for everything else her food her heat her internet her cell phone everything any expenses and maintenance on her car everything she barely can survive she's barely surviving financially she needs to get in her art studio and make artwork and she wants to she tells me she wants to get in her studio make art and make money now she is a very talented artist and she used to make money with her art at different art galleries that represented her she's been juried into lots of shows I mean she is a very talented artist and that's true and real what's not real is that she doesn't realize she's a low-income senior and she lives on property on Whidbey Island in way at the top of a steep hill so if the electricity goes out she has to tough it out so why am I so worried about this I mean like I am a 51 year old daughter I never got married I never had kids I'm afraid of trusting other people today I went to the food bank instead of going on a boat ride with my boyfriend but that's because the day I usually go to the food bank I got a modeling job so I took the modeling job because I love to work and today I went to the food bank and my boyfriend wanted me to rush home from there rush to his he basically was kind of you know it was his idea this is a pattern the guy that I got pregnant with it was his idea to have a baby with me and I I thought I was in my 20s I thought I would maybe have one kid when I was in my 30s like maybe like 35 or you know I wanted to wait I wanted to become more mature I wanted to travel I wanted to not rush into having a kid I never felt like I wanted to get married to anybody and I still I, I don't think I'll ever get married I will never obviously never have kids I'm now 51 I'm still having my monthly woman's cycle sorry if that weirds you out to hear that but that's just part of nature uh, I'm still I'm one of the few 51 year old women who still has her cycle my mom didn't go through menopause till she was 55 so I'm one of these women that still has her cycle and for some reason I'm an introvert but I feel compelled to just spill my guts on video I used to dance around nude and say a bunch of trippy things that people thought I was on drugs you know the whole goddess crane TV show that I did on Seattle public access every week from 1996 to 2011 I used to dance around nude and body paint and just it was like a video diary performance art uh, a lot of people thought I was on drugs but I never was I don't like I don't like marijuana I don't like alcohol I don't like smoking cigarettes I just I don't do any drugs uh, I listen to lots of music I listen to Tom Petty and and Neil Young and Tori Amos and Bob Dylan and lots of good rock and roll and Beck and Bjork and Imogen Heap and um, classical music and jazz and lots of great music but I, I I really Tom Petty and Tori Amos are really what do it for me they're my service musicians thank you Tom Petty and Tori Amos for being my service musicians um, I can only be myself so I had a really good time modeling for the group in Connecticut a few days ago 
thank you everyone who drew me in Connecticut. Uh, that felt really good and uh, validating and affirming. I earned money. They appreciated my poses. They drew me. I was all natural. Didn't need to have to wear anything. Um, and today I wanted to go to the food bank and, you know, other days of the week, I have the full day clear. And so I could go on a boat ride with my boyfriend on a different day. He wanted me to go today. He wanted me to just blow off the food bank. I didn't want to. There's also a lady, a disabled single mother who has a disabled son. And I like when I go to the food bank, I get stuff for myself. I get stuff for my boyfriend and I get food for this lady and her disabled son. I also have extra food in my car that I hand out to homeless people when I drive, when I get off my, when I get off my freeway exit, sometimes there's a homeless person standing there with a sign, you know, anything helps. I give them food. I give them like bread or, you know, whatever I get at the food bank. Cause I don't eat, I don't eat wheat or bread. So whenever I get carbohydrate type snacks, I hand it out to homeless people. So I like to do that. It gives me a sense of purpose. And my boyfriend wants me to just like, it's really none of my business. Like it's, he's entitled to his opinion. I need to say no to people more. I need to learn to say no and trust that I can do that. I can put myself first. You know, when they say, put your own oxygen mask on first. So I need to take care of Shannon first. And then people accuse me of being narcissistic. So then I think, oh, maybe I'm a narcissist. But then other people say I'm not a narcissist. If I think I might be a narcissist, that means I'm not because if I was a real narcissist, I would never question. I'd be like, I'm a great person. I'm just great. It's like, okay, well then I guess I'm probably hopefully not a narcissist, but you know, if I am, you know what I mean? I'm not like a horrible person. I'm a good person, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm always wanting to feel stable and safe. So you could say I'm very insecure. I'm confident in my art. I think I've done a lot of really interesting artwork. I, I am a designer. I am an abstract expressionist designer. Um, I happen to think that my self portrait photography is powerful and well done and interesting and diverse. Um, I happen to think that some of my designs, this is a, a, a painting of mine that was printed onto a neck gaiter. This neck gaiter is actually um, too small. They sent me the wrong size, but this is an example of some of my artwork printed onto fabric. And so, and I designed my own tattoo, which means be yourself, no matter what they say. Um, so I think I have done some good artwork. I think I'm a good art model. Um, here's more artwork of mine. This is a pastel drawing that I did that was printed onto a mouse pad. So that's something, and I've taken a lot of beautiful photographs of animals and plants and water droplets and nature. I love nature. I'm inspired by plants and animals and nature. That's what drives me. So today I wanted to go to the food bank and, um, And I couldn't cram it in to rush off and go for a boat ride with my boyfriend. And for some reason, I let his response bother me. I should have just said no in the first place. I sort of reluctantly agreed to it yesterday. I also had a therapy session at 3 p.m. And I wanted to stick around for that, even though it wasn't very helpful. I feel kind of like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Like, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Like the power is within me. Dorothy had the power all along and she thought she needed the Wizard of Oz and the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion and the um, Tin Man and all of that jazz. So, so the power is within me and yet I'm always doubting myself. So I had a, a, a difficult childhood. I grew up in San Diego. Then we moved to Whidbey Island. Um, I, as a little kid, I knew a lot about my parents' problems. I knew all about my dad's 
problems with women, his love life. He kept trying to find a girlfriend. My dad is a very handsome, athletic person, and yet he's insecure and doubts himself, although now he's a lot happier. And my dad finally in his 70s has higher self-esteem and realizes he's handsome and healthy and a good person. And my dad finally values himself, but it took him like 70 some years to get to where he is now. And I'm proud of him and glad that his self-esteem is a lot higher now than it used to be. Um, uh, my mom got married a bunch of times and had all kinds of boyfriends that weren't very healthy. And it, she had a heck of a time trying to figure out in her career, like her artwork is really great. Um, but she hasn't really found commercial success and it's partly because she doesn't want commercial success. My mom used to always say to me, I don't want to be famous. She's like, I don't want to be famous. Like I always wanted my mom to be a famous artist. I was like, yeah, mom, be a famous artist. You know, she does really interesting, unique designs with clay and metal. Um, and her last name is different than mine. And she doesn't want anyone to know that I'm her, that she's my mom because she's embarrassed by my goddess Kring thing, which hurts my feelings. But, you know, she's entitled to that opinion. Um, I think I'm mostly a great person. I think that I have said and done some embarrassing things with my multimedia online. Um, it's sad to me that my mom doesn't want anyone to know that, you know, because my dad, um, uh, people used to recognize him and say, are you Goddess Kring's dad? <laughs> and he was he, he was proud. He was he was happy when they would say that. He was proud of the whole Kringen Goddess Kring thing. Um, my dad's name is Gus Kringen. Um, my mom has a different name, a different last name, and a, a different first name. And so I won't say it, but because she's very private. But she's an artist, and she she needs to make money with her art to support herself. And yet she doesn't want commercial success because she thinks that's egotistical she doesn't want to be on an ego trip and a power trip and all this kind of stuff and so I think she's conflicted about make money be commercially successful and yet she doesn't want to be famous because that's egotistical and yet she doesn't it's like it's it's just it's it's there's conflicts going on there uh, I am sad that I don't do my artwork as much as I could because I'm so consumed with being an art model for other people and honestly, art modeling is a, a demanding job. Um, you have to hustle to get the work. You have to promote yourself and reach out to lots and lots and lots of people and try to get modeling jobs. And then there's word of mouth. It took me five years to break into art modeling. I started in 1992 and it took five years. Um, so I spend a lot of time and energy as an art model um, and then I don't have as much time and energy left over to do my art. So it might be good if I focused more on my artwork. I'm, I'm a very talented, I'm talented photographer. I'm a talented designer. I'm making neck gaiters and face masks with my designs printed on them. I paint shoes. I painted shoes for musician Tori Amos. I mean, these are just some of the things that I've done. Um, my mom and dad are both very talented people. And when I grew up, I felt kind of like an orphan. I felt kind of like my mom and my dad and me, all three of us are orphans that had no parents. I think I've said this before on, on previous videos. I guess I just feel like, felt like recording myself. So if anybody listens to this video, I hope you get something out of it. And if nobody listens to this video, this is for God or great spirit or that maybe this is just for me. I'll watch this video back. Hey, Shannon, watch your own video back and see if you can learn something. I really admire the comedian JP Sears. He's doing really brave trailblazing videos right now. Um, he did a satire um, about um, being taken off social media sites. Some of his videos have been, I won't say the word, um, I admire him a lot. I admire people who are pro free speech, pro democracy, pro speaking out, uh, pro mental health, pro sexuality, pro um, um, body health, sexual health, uh, pro uh, embracing your sexuality, embracing your natural human self. I'm a bit of a naturist slash nudist. I'm, I'm a figure model. Um, I'm into being emotionally honest. I know you have to be careful and you know, if, if all of us were honest at all times, we would all go around hurting each other's feelings, I suppose. So that wouldn't be good to be too honest all the time. Um, I try to, 
I mean no disrespect to my boyfriend or to my mom or my dad. I'm just talking about Shannon's boundaries. I have challenges. I need to learn to say no. If somebody disrespects me or dismisses me, that's not okay and that's disrespectful, but I need to realize if I'm putting up with something that seems disrespectful, it's my responsibility. Like a woman who stays with a guy who punches her, now I understand this because I've been in, I dated a guy once that was very verbally abusive and it was hard to break up with him. Um, and so my responsibility was to get away from him. He was abusive to me verbally and psychologically and it was up to me to get away from him. Um, but I understand that it's hard to break that cycle. So I'm trying to figure out how do I stand up for myself if I'm in a situation with another person, whether it's anyone that I'm trying to be close to, the guy I'm dating, uh, platonic friends of mine, uh, my mother, my father, anyone online who I think is being disrespectful to me. I need to speak up for myself and I need to learn to say yes and no more carefully. Um, there's something painful. I, the way I'm speaking right now, I don't speak as confidently in person with people as I do when I'm alone with my video camera or my microphone, I'm more confident when I write, when I do my artwork and I write, I'm more confident when I am in a personal relationship with my mom or my dad or my boyfriend or even my creative writing buddies, I'm not as confident. A friend of mine recently said that he heard my radio show where I recited some of my poetry and I sounded so confident. And he said, you sound so different when I'm in my creative writing group and I read my poetry out loud, I, I hesitate and I, I sound, um, I'm not as confident. You know, I don't do dramatic pauses and like, you know, um, performance type. I just kind of very humbly speak my poetry with a lack of confidence and that's really sad and painful. I find that so painful. Um, thank God there's cameras and microphones though, because nobody would ever see this side of me if I didn't have cameras and microphones. Uh, and I'm sorry if I come off as narcissistic. If I'm, a, if I'm any kind of narcissist, I mean, what does it mean to be narcissistic? Like to be, cause some people, you know, they think I'm a narcissist simply because I take so many photos of myself. I mean, I have taken photos of other people. Like I've done headshots for, um, some models and some people that I know for men and women. Um, but the best photos I've taken are the ones of me. Like, I feel like I'm comfortable with me. So I love expressing different sides of myself. So I feel like I'm trying to figure out who I am. I didn't, I was neglected as a child. I'm an only child. I was neglected. I didn't get enough attention from my parents. Like they were distracted and busy with their own stuff. And I don't know if I got enough eye contact from them, or maybe I didn't make enough eye contact. I didn't get validated. And I felt like I was missing something and I'm seeking it even to this day. So part of why I take so many pictures of myself is I'm trying to figure out who am I and what do I want because I'm not sure still at the age of 51 and I never had kids. So maybe I'm missing out on the kind of love that I could have shared with um, a son or daughter. I will never know that. And so I am sad about that. Uh, I wonder sometimes, you know, maybe I shouldn't have had the abortion in my 20s, but that's what I did. And ever since then, I've been too traumatized to ever try to have a kid ever again. And now I'm 51, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I've never wanted to get married or have kids, really. Only a, you know, part of me wanted to be a mom, maybe in my late 30s, because um, I felt like I would be mature enough then. But now I'm 51, and I feel like maybe when I'm 65, I'll be mature enough to have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> How sad is that? So um, I'm really good at being a mom to my cat. So it's been 39 minutes. I better upload this video. So this is just some of my thoughts. It is now September 4th, 2020. I'm grateful that I have a safe place to live. I have food and shelter, a nice landlord. My parents are both physically healthy. My mom is financially stressed out, but she's physically healthy. My dad is emotionally traumatized by his cats being killed in front of him, but he is very financially doing well and he has some good therapy. 
support. Um, he's in a grief a support group and a post-traumatic stress disorder therapy. Um, and he has three new cats that he loves and he's bonding with, and that's good. Um, I have a cat named Kisun and he's doing well. So I'm going to have dinner with um, my lover tonight or my boyfriend or whatever you want to call him. And I'm just going to try to learn something and we can go on a boat ride another day. He needs to forgive me. Uh, I need to, to figure out what I want and to value myself. I need to learn that it's not narcissistic for me to value myself. There's a difference between being totally selfish and rude to other people and simply valuing yourself and realizing everyone is important, including me. We're all important. It really hurt my feelings when somebody online said to me, there's nothing special. When I said something about me that I thought was unusual, this woman said to me, there's nothing special about that. And I thought that was kind of nasty. And so that hurt my feelings. And so I don't like it when people talk to me like that. Um, that's that's like mean. And I don't know what her intention was. That was creepy. So I'm just sharing that. Um, I'd like to learn how to speak up for myself. I know that I'm talented in some ways. I have confidence in my artistic talent. I'm proud of myself. I built a career as an art model. Um, it was my full-time job from 19, I started in 92. I, I modeled full-time from 97 up until recently. Now I'm sort of semi-employed and I, I, uh, I'm getting some of the pandemic unemployment. Um, funds, which feels really weird. I feel like I'm being buttered up for something in the future. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I feel like my long-term future is to make a living online in my own way. There's online art modeling jobs that I've been manifesting. Um, there's about six different art schools that still hire me out of 15 that used to hire me because of this whole medical thing we're in. And there's two or three different medical schools that I still work with, with, with medical students as a standardized patient. Um, that's a, a certain thing that I do and um, long story, but I have an unusual freelance life. Um, I'm going for walks every night in my neighborhood. Um, I feel safe doing that and I can be have a naked face out there at night when nobody's around and walk and just breathe air normally like a normal human being and get my exercise and have my privacy. I'm getting sunshine every day. I'm eating really healthy. I don't believe in eating junk food. I believe in eating real protein and real fats and not that many carbs and hardly any refined sugar and fake junk food, but you know, occasional you know, ice cream or whatever, but not a whole lot. Um, dark chocolate. So thanks for listening. This is Shannon Crink and Goddess Crink. 42 minutes. We better cut this off. Um, my radio show is called Goddess Crink Radio. It's on every week, Hollow Earth Radio and Mixcloud. And I just do these random videos that I put on Facebook, BitChute, YouTube, wherever I can upload these. I'd upload these everywhere. So, um, Good luck to everyone. Be yourself. Authentic ejaculation of my soul. Molten orange liquid glow. Anger takes its toll. Blowing status quo. Some of my poetry. Um, intimacy chasing me. Feel like it's erasing me. And let's see. Self-abandonment got me stranded again. Polluted and uprooted. Those are some of the phrases in my poems. A little sad, but you know, that's, that's what I wrote. Uh, thank you, Tom Petty and Tori Amos, for your amazing music and lyrics. Yay, they are my service musicians. So thank you for listening. I hope I inspired you in some way. If you have something you want to say, get a microphone or a camera and just start speaking it. I encourage more people to express themselves in an authentic way if you want to. If you don't want to, hey, don't. But if you feel like you want to say something, please express your own unique self. We are all totally unique and yet we're all in this together at the same simultaneously. We're all totally unique and we're all in this together. Bye for now.